It's Saturday, December 12th. Uh, it's sunny outside and a lot warmer than it was in the last two days. So you can come out now. Take your eyes out from underneath your quilt. Take off all the 16 layers of clothes. You only need one today. And it is a good day to come out because there are a gazillion things happening in the neighborhood. There are three, count them, three craft fairs this week, today. Um, one is right here in the outdoor patio of the Heartland Cafe. One is over at Loyola Park, um, the annual uh, winter uh, craft fair, and another at Jarvis Square uh, today. I'll talk more about that and the second fair planned for next week because we had too many crafters who couldn't fit in today's. We're going to do it again next Saturday out, out here in front of the Heartland. Um, but you are tuning in uh, to the middle of or the first third of Live from the Heartland. My name is Katie Hogan. We are uh, talking with good people doing important good things as usual in the world. And today I get to um, interview not one not but two um, allies, political friends, um, big-time political allies over many years who are both running for the Democratic nomination of the 18th District. I'm not sure, Robin, but between you and Jeff, we'd be well covered uh, here in the 18th. Um, we're two blocks south, uh, south of the 18th right here, but um, how are you? Welcome. I'm doing great. I am doing great, Katie. Welcome to Live from the Heartland. Thank you, thank you so much. And um, I'm glad to see you. You've been on the show before in other capacities. And uh, probably that should come out in talking about, you know, what, how you came to the decision to run for this office. I know it was a, it was a hard decision. Uh, there were a lot, a lot of things to consider. And um, what made you decide to run, ultimately? Yeah. Well, you know, I've decided to run really to follow in the footsteps of Julie Hamos and Jan Schakowsky, two great progressive women who have been in this position before. And, um, you know, I think that we all come out of a similar tradition. Three of us have all uh, worked on statewide issues before we ran for office, and we've all been able to do significant things that have been able to impact on many, many people's lives. Let's get particular there. Yeah, Jan Schakowsky uh, was able to have us have, uh, um, have dates on our food, the, so we know when... when the whole uh, consumer we, yes, labeling thing, which brought Jan into bad. politics. And um, Julie Hamos was the first person to write legislation around domestic violence issues. And I've been able to work on children's health issues. So now every child in Illinois who's uninsured has access to health coverage. That Over, would be the all kids plan. And before that, it was kid care. Kid care, right. And uh -huh. I was one of the architects of the kid care program on the governor's who did you plan. Who did you have to bring together in order for that to pass? Yeah, that was an interesting story. We, we had to bring together both Republicans and Democrats. We initially had the uh, Democratic, uh, the, the Republican governor ready to ready to do an administrative rule, and the uh, Republican senator said, no way, we want to look at this, we want input into this. So we had to meet with um, Republican senators, and then everybody was able to put an advocate on this committee. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was placed on the committee by the Senate uh, Democrats, and there were also, uh, the Medical Society was on that committee, the um, uh, Manufacturing Association was on that committee. That's so interesting. So it was really quite diverse, mm -hmm. and um, we were able to really work across party lines and come up with a great program. At the end of it, the uh, Senator Rauschenberger said to me, oh, Robin, this is such a great program. We've done such a great job. We need to take this across the country and show what we can do. So, And that, that, that did pass under George Ryan initially? It passed or, under uh, Edgar. Oh, under Edgar. And then Ryan was really the one that implemented it. Ah, uh, OK. So, um, so like your opponent who sat here before and sort of chided me for demonizing um, the speaker mm -hmm. who shall remain nameless in this segment. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to learn my lesson. Um, you also uh, talk and come from the experience of having put people together around a table who differ greatly and for whom mm -hmm. some of their views are anathema to some women, for example, in this, in this state. Um, I, too, l hate to see a, a lose a woman candidate or a seat occupied by a woman, you know, and not have another woman come into office mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. um, to keep it even. What, how important or how difficult has it been to have a balancing act between 
being the candidate and also not, not being s s pigeonholed, mm -hmm. how, what ways does it, I'm sure it comes up in complex ways that um, it's, not, it's not enough just to be a woman running for office, no. yeah. even at this late date. So what do you get from yeah. the... Uh, it's, it's not just enough to be a woman running for a, a seat that has been held by women. Um, I think that there are, there are uh, other things to look at, and I believe that I'm actually the most qualified candidate to run. I have spent 20 years uh, working as the director of the Illinois Maternal and Child Health Coalition uh, and have done uh, extensive policy work in Springfield. So I am probably the only candidate that's ever really worked to pass a bill, and the bill's passed. Um, and many, we have passed many bills around substance abuse in pregnant women, around school health centers. Um, I, I'm quite familiar with the budget process in Springfield, and I've learned over the years that um, sometimes you don't even have to get a bill out. If you can just get your program put in the budget, it gets passed. So, mm. you know, I, I'm, I know where the budget is, I know how to read the budget, and um, I know how to bring money back to the community, and that's what I really want to do. So, and that's what I, my next question was, what would you like to, uh, have be your legacy were you elected what would you want people to know that you're working for working on behalf of yeah there are, there are a number of issues i think primarily my passion and my life has really been spent working on health care and i really believe that we need to have affordable accessible health care for everyone and that's my goal um we i help they're not helping us in dc right now well not as much as we Come would on, like that's your for turn sure. to spank no no me. no i mean i got this attitude <laughs> and Tell me if I'm wrong. It looks like the most watered-down pieces stuff. Well, there are going to be some significant pieces in this bill that I think we have to be appreciative of. First of all, the insurance reforms are, are pretty significant. So people with um, pre-existing conditions will be able to get health coverage. And I think that has been a real roadblock to people getting health coverage in the past. Yeah. I think that uh, there will have a, a, an exchange where people can really look at all the different um, insurance products that are available and compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Because right now, as a small business, I, you know, when, when I go to look at different insurance products, it's really confusing. Totally. And, and um, at least there will be some more uh, transparency in that. So there are some good things. Um, I am obviously very concerned about women's right to choose being threatened in that, in that legislation. Unbelievable. And, um, I, you know, I was shocking when that came up, and it was shocking when it passed. And um, I hope that we're going to do everything we can to, to make sure that, it, that, that, that that doesn't happen. But that language is out of That it. language is out. So um, I interrupted you. You said health care. Yeah, so health care is, is, is one. And for me, there is gonna, there more than likely will be something passed at the federal level, and that will have to be implemented at the state level. And I am thrilled and excited to be able to be there to really um, implement that way in the best way possible um, around insurance reforms, around Medicaid issues. And those are, you know, Medicaid is something that I know back and forth. So and the state hasn't paid its Medicaid bills in how long now? Well, they pay some. They don't pay all of them. And uh -huh. it's, it, every day they don't pay a bill, they save a million dollars. So it's like 100 days out already. You know, the budget's in a crisis. Yeah. But the other things I, I'd, I'd really like to do in, uh, in Springfield is to really work very hard to change the culture there. And, you know, I think that there are going to be quite a few new people going down mm -hmm. in the state rep. And I feel like I also know who the good people are down there already and who the people are who sit on the fence. You know, I'm being endorsed by um, Sarah Feigenholtz, by Art Berman, who was down there, Senator Berman, Representative mm -hmm. Sarah Feigenholtz, by, Sen by Representative Karen May, by Senator um, uh, Art Berman, Representative Lisa Hernandez. Uh, many, many of the uh, legislators are excited about me coming down there. Um, and I feel like I can be a leader on day one and really work with people around um, progressive issues and helping people who are on the fence get off the fence. You know, I feel like I'm in this for the long run. You know, I promise that over the next 10 years, I will strategically build uh, an alliance there and groups of people who are really more interested in a more progressive agenda and institutionalize that. So when I leave, that, 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 that culture will still be there. What, that's good. Um, you know, I, as, as well as you, I have experience building the Black Latino Progressive White Coalition that exactly. got Harold Washington elected. I was working with Luis Gutierrez at the time, mm -hmm. and so I was seeing it from that angle as well, from the Latino and, and Black uh, uh, angle, and that, and it was very, very interesting. And um, 
And I learned many, many lessons that I feel I can bring to Springfield to work with, because Springfield also has caucuses. You know, they've got the Black Caucus, they have the Latino Caucus, and I have friends in both of those caucuses. Now, people that I've worked with for many, many years, mm -hmm. um, as well as people from the, the Southern Caucus, uh, because I've represented a statewide organization and have worked with people from throughout the state.